The Six to Seven Figure Show, episode 20. Ready? Let's hit it. Broadcasting from the Valley of the Sun, outside Phoenix, Arizona, this is the Six to Seven Figure Show. Tired of working so hard and having no time? Take your six figure practice and turn it to a thriving seven figure enterprise. And now, your host, author, speaker, mentor, and strategist. Frank Bria. All right, welcome everyone to the Six to Seven Figure Show. I am Frank Bria, and I am really thrilled to be joined by Heather Yurko. She's like one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, I seriously have never met someone so inspirational, so positive, so uh, outgoing, and, and like has mm-hmm. big plans for the world. So I'm thrilled to be uh, chatting with her. And, and basically, if you have not met Heather, this is going to be a blast for you because she just has an energy that is, uh, that's amazing. Her divine assignment is PIP. Okay, that's called, that stands for Positively Impacting People. And the way she does that currently is with serving the beauty industry. And she's created a high-level salon in Louisville, Kentucky, and an education platform for industry professionals. So her mission is really to shift the perspective of the way that her industry sees themselves, which will in turn shift the way that all of society will view hairstylists and salon owners. And we're going to get into that a little bit because I find that mission like part of the fascinating part about Heather. Um, so, but uh, just as a brief introduction to her, um, I just think that positively impacting people, that that uh, acronym for her is probably about the most accurate description <laughs> I can think of for her. Uh, so uh, anyway, Heather, we're absolutely thrilled, absolutely thrilled to have you on. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to, to connect and offer off share anything that I can that could help someone else or help them prevent them from I call it face planting that's one of our core values <laughs> from face planting if they don't have to so I'm excited to be here yeah absolutely and you've got a ton of stuff to share you've got a ton of uh, experience to share so first of all for those of you who don't know uh, for those who don't know you 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 focus on the beauty industry uh, talk a little bit about what you do for that industry and and who you're working with and the sort of the impact you're trying to create. I, it's really funny because if you're an entrepreneur, there, there are just so many common denominators of our everyday life that it does not matter the industry. So I know that maybe sometimes when people hear that I am so niched out to beauty professionals that it may seem like what can you learn or what can you, um, you align with? And it's like, oh, damn near everything. The only thing that it might be a little bit different is just the audience that I serve and the way in which I serve them by just the content that I deliver. But everything else is, is very in alignment with what every other entrepreneur goes through. So I serve my two companies. So I have a salon and the salon it has really taught me everything that – I am teaching in my education platform. So I have a team of people. I have really honed in on leadership and great leaders creating other great leaders. I do not want to be a, an owner or a creator that has to work in my business all the time yeah. because that's not sustainable and it's not what's best for my team. And I tell them when I started separating a little bit, and working a little bit more behind the scenes and with fewer people and not the whole team. It was kind of tough for people because they missed the energy. They missed me. But um, I told them, I'm like, what would happen to this company if something happened to me? What would happen? Could this company go on? And the answer was a big old hell's no. So I'm like, we can't do this guys. Like the mission is way too big. The vision is just way too expansive. So in within the salon, I have really just focused on creating other great leaders. I have a phenomenal CEO. And then under the CEO, there is directors under her. So my job really is completely out of the company now. And I lead the leaders from a very back end view. And then with my other company, PIP University, the education platform, that is really just standing for the level that we need to see ourselves at 
And if we want other people to look at us differently, we first have to look at ourselves differently and we have to run different businesses that will help with our confidence because it's tough when you're trying to build confidence, but then every day you're looking at terrible reports. None of you're not hitting any metrics. You're not hitting any benchmarks. So it's really giving them the struck, the people that I serve, giving them the structure that they need that would support them being able to build confidence. And that's through having a healthy business. So that's pretty much what I focus on right now. That's, that's what, what I think is so powerful about that. Um, and, and you kind of mentioned this up front about the, you know, there being so many common denominators. Um, one of the reasons why I think what you're doing is so powerful is because the, you, you can say beauty industry, you can, you could substitute out another vertical, but fundamentally you're, you're transforming an industry that would without someone like you um, kind of talking about the things you're talking about, be stuck in this hourly mindset. I mean, you just talked about scale and removing yourself from the business. And, and at least in the beauty industry, I would say probably most people would not think about those concepts. In fact, they might think that they're impossible in, a, in an industry where you are literally, you know, physically required to be there in order to provide that service. So whether it's the beauty industry or a number of any other industries that feel the same way, where they feel like there's no way to break out of that mold where you have to physically be there. I mean, therapists are the same way, right? Um, you know, there's a, there's a whole, you can go through a whole list of, of uh, industries that are similar to that, but you're talking about scale and you're talking about sustainability. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fascinating. Um, yeah. So what is one of the things that you think is so critical? I mean, why, why transform the beauty industry? What, why is it so critical that that industry be transformed? Because, <laughs> ooh, I get passionate about this. Because <laughs> I don't our industry is so powerful when it comes to connecting with other humans. Like I'm sitting here in my living room right now and I'm looking at all the houses on my street and in every single house, there are human beings that live, that have a story that are in pain that need someone to talk to. That is an unbiased opinion. Yeah. And there are none. Correct me if I'm wrong for all the listeners. There, I feel like there are no other industries where like every single person on the planet really does need us. Like as soon as we got on the call, Frank, I noticed you got a haircut. (laughs) haircut. I don't care who you are. You get your haircut. Maybe you do it in your garage or maybe somebody else does it for you in a kitchen or something like that. But for the majority of people, you go somewhere to get your hair done. And then for a lot of people, they're in there for a good amount of time if they're getting color. A lot of women do this. Yeah. So the fact that it seems like a necessity for a lot of people, and it is the one thing that you you have to make time for. And when you're there, another human is connecting with you. Right. The space in which we can transform humanity is so great. But in order for us to leave the mark that we can in, in all of the world, we have to show up better. We have to show up like really owning the power. I am so damn powerful behind that chair because I take it so seriously and I understand the, the goodness that I can put on all of these people that live in these houses. And I also understand that sometimes if I don't show up my right, the right way, that that can really be a, a it can be sad for some people. Like there has been many cases with some great people in our industry where they've told stories, um, like amazing stories where, their hairstylist saved their life. They were planning on going home and killing themselves. And because their hairstylist took the time, just be be there with them, intentional with them, listen to them. It literally did save lives. So that's, that's why it's, our calling is just way too great to not be responsible in what we're here for. Yeah. I mean that, and that mission is one of the reasons why I, that that's one of the reasons I'm so inspired by you. I, I, to see such a tr- to see such power in transformation, I I think for most people who are listening have never thought about it that way before. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Pretty and, cool. And there's really no reason why any industry 
that requires that physical presence that the beauty industry does. There's other industries where that same kind of physical presence, that same kind of emotional presence in, in how they connect with other human beings can't have the same kind of power. That's really true because when I look at PIP University, the education platform, what we do through our program that you helped us create, thank you, I see when I am working with our students that are hairstylists or salon owners, I see the emotional impact that we, we we're professors, that's, we term all of it as a university. I see the emotional impact that we're making and we're not doing their hair. We're not yeah, right yeah. behind there, even though we are in the industry, but the way that we're able to affect our students to move them with certain emotion, I think to me, it's just how, how far are you willing to go to sit in the uncomfort of pushing someone to their maximum potential? And then are you willing to create the safe space for you all to talk about it? Because if those two things are present, yeah. the, the amount of emotion that you can provoke in someone in the relationship that you can build and the transformation that happens after that intimacy is well, like, what else could you ask for? Like fulfilling yeah. AF. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you, it's because you've gone down to one of the basic needs of every human being, right? I mean, you've, you've gone down to the core of yep. fulfilling some basic needs that human beings have. And in some sense, it's more, you know, because as I talk about, right, the, you know, people buy to make money, save money, you know, stay out of yep. jail, have a better life. There's something about that, um, that core need, which is, which is far more basic than making money or, um, oh. Or even that self that the self actualization piece of having a better life, just being able to feel a sense of belonging, to connect, um, to feel heard, yeah, uh, yes. amazing, amazing power that sits there for sure. So I totally agree, completely. Yeah. So so tell us about Pip University. So currently, as as Pip University exists, we have a twelve week program that serves hairstylists right now the avatar is wide it's wide and we we're we're working on figuring that out and we basically we thought that we were helping hairstylists make more money okay. we were going to help them make more money and all that but and this is just what's so cool for every entrepreneur is that's what we thought was going to be one of the outcomes and that's how we marketed this damn thing. Yeah. But then as, but when you're doing it and you're creating it, but you, and you start making ads for it and everything, and then you actually have the program and you're tweaking it and shifting, shifting it. We have an Asana project called improving. It's called rich life hairstylist, improving RLH. When you start to make it better and make it better, all of a sudden we realized that is not what we do. This is so much deeper. And, mm. and what's really hilarious is the four things that people buy, the four reasons people buy in your workshop. Yep. I knew from the very beginning, it was not, they do not take our course. They do not purchase our product to make more money. It's to have a better life. And somehow this got confused with us marketing that it was all about money. So, but anyways, we basically have improved it and improved it. And currently right now it's really about like everything is building their mindset and yeah. then them making more money is a byproduct of, there are some people though, that when we have their graduation call, did they make more money? Yeah, probably a little bit, but them even getting to a space where they could charge appropriately the yeah. value in which they are exchanging for currency from the customer, just getting them to charge was worth it because of what that did for their, for everything, for their worthiness behind the chair. And again, this is, this can be applied anywhere. Absolutely. Uh, and then some people that, Maybe their mindset wasn't in need of that much growth. Of course, we all can improve our mindsets. Yeah. Now, those people just absolutely crush it with money. I mean, those people come out and it's, it's insane how much more money they make. So the outcome is really dependent upon 
when the person starts right. where they're at. Well, this, this is a really applicable uh, concept. So I want to dig into it a little bit more. Um, as you're working with, uh, as you're working with your students and you're asking them to raise their prices, what are the things that stand in their way? You talked about mindset, but let's dig into a little bit more specifically. What are the things they have to overcome before they can bump up that, that price? Because I think for a lot of people, they're, they're in a very similar position. People who are listening to this where they're like, wait a minute, you're talking about a cut in color, which one day was one price and the next day is a new price. Nothing changed except for the price and the attitude or the mindset of the person. And I think most people feel similarly about their services. Like the oh, yeah. price is going to go up, but I'm not really doing anything different. It's the same amount of time. It's the same amount of effort. So what are some of the things that you work with people that help them get through that process that allow them to kind of give permission to themselves to do that? Well, so the first thing is we have them raise their prices. Like we take them through a 20% price increase, which for some of our girls, that's big because the more expensive you get 20%, all of a sudden yeah. becomes a lot more than it was if your prices were half of that. Sure. And our program basically elevates the guest experience. So the guest is seeing some differences. That's we good. Make sure okay. that, the way that they look. So there are improvements being made that way because we believe that people purchase experiences. I tell my people all the time, we do not, we do not sell haircuts and colors. <laughs> we sell experiences. Yeah. That's very, very different. And for any industry out there, and you were really good about this one time, Frank, I remember when I was creating the course, I wanted in one of the phases, I wanted to get to a space where I didn't know what I was trying to pull off. I didn't know if I was going to be, if the content was going to be able to get them there. And it was almost like one was going to make them grow by 33%. And then the other one was going to make them grow by like 66%. And I said, so I don't know if I can do that. What should I do? And you were like, rather than look at looking at it from that way, what needs to be done to where you can't ensure that it is 66%, yeah. what needs to be added? And that was such a good perspective for me because it's like, if we don't feel, if we don't feel worthy of our pricing, then we have to do something that will make other people feel like our pricing is worth it. So if the experience isn't there, if the product isn't there where you can charge this much, figure out a way to make it get there. Yeah. You know, that's a critical, that's a critical piece right there. I, I, I love that you phrased it that way because that is something that a lot of people get stuck on, which is, well, I don't know how to raise my, like, I don't feel like I can just raise my price. And you've basically said, well, then fix it. Like, you know, what do you need to do to make that, make that uh, make sense for you and then just go do it. And what's really cool about this is I just, I started like diving deep because our, our program for our industry is so expensive. Yeah. And in my industry, I do not, I am like not, everybody knows that like we charge money. We charge a lot of money and everybody knows sure. that I'm not afraid to charge, but it was completely different coming into this space of the education side of things and not like us being a hair salon. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I need, I'm going to charge that. And I started having fear around it. And then I was like, I remember telling you and then some of the other people that were on the call, it's very important that you all know, this is not something I struggle with. I like coach people on this. So it was really funny to me that I was struggling with it. And then I just started because the answer is to not cave in the fear, cave into the fear and then yeah. just make me feel comfortable and just charge less. So I started diving into just so many resources on how to create just a better client experience. And yes, so much of it is the content, but it's even more than that is like just per personalizing the onboarding. What does their onboarding feel like and look like and what little prizes what little surprises do they get throughout the onboarding experience that just yeah. put a special touch on it yeah. that way throughout the entire 12 weeks they're like this shit is good this is good <laughs> and and um that to me makes it feel like the five thousand dollars that's what we charge is where it should be yeah and people are like it's worth every bit of it and i don't know if you were going to ask this but this has got to be talked about. 
the systems that we have. Yeah. We have just so many small systems that make sure that our follow through is just so superb. And so when we have people's graduation calls, we have them do a survey and, and I let them know, I want your honest feedback because if there is anything that we can do better for people that you're probably never going to meet, I really want you to be honest with us because we want to make this thing the best. And we've gotten such great feedback. But one of the main things that is always said is your all's level of organization and follow through is second to none. We've never, like, they've never seen anything like it, which I'm very grateful for because I'm like, if you knew what this was like behind the scenes, <laughs> you'd be like, how the hell are you executing this? But man, those systems for every entrepreneur out there, I just can't stress enough how much that has saved us. Our content is very, very good. It could probably be better in some areas. It's just me innovating and figuring out how that should look. Yeah. But what saves it is the structure that we've built. That's that what fun. saves everybody. Yep. Structures and systems. Like that's, that's how you grow. So, so let's dig into one of those structures. You talked about onboarding. Do you mind walking us through what your onboarding process looks like right now? Yeah. So we have basically an Asana um, project that's super duper long with roles and dates and things like that. And we have um, like our model is basically evergreen. So people can sign up whenever. And it all starts with as soon as like a, a sales call is closed, the call is closed. And then there is as soon as, cause we use click funnels. And I think it's important that people at least just, I always want to know the platforms that other entrepreneurs are, are using that way. I'm like, is it, is it something that I'm not using yet that I could be using? Yeah. So in click funnels, as soon as like a new order is processed, there's like a, a zap that happens. And then we use Thinkific to deliver the course. And then from that point, it just gets the ball rolling and there is some manual things. So after, um, once that happens, it sends a trigger and active campaign and they get four emails and this is very clear on their sales call right after they're closed. Very clear. And then the four emails, the first one is them scheduling their kickoff call. So yeah. there's a Calendly link that way it's easy for them. They're being guided. They know that they're going to get one email a day and, um, for the next four days. And then it's just so it's also really self-guided by them and it doesn't, it really doesn't take a lot of manual work for us. And that is so key. If you're trying to build where, I mean, what happens and I can't wait for this day. What <laughs> happens when we're bringing in or closing 60 sales a month? Yeah. We cannot be doing everything manual. No. No. So they get four emails. The first one is just a letter for me really getting their mind right. Cause the first thing that's going to show up when they drop money like that is fear. Yep. I mean, they're going to be so pumped, but then they're going to freak out what they just Absolutely. did. Right. So I bring that down a little bit. They schedule the kickoff call. The next email, they get a tutorial on Slack because so many people get into Slack and they have no idea what it is. Yeah, that's true. And we need them clear. I need them clear when they're in Slack. I need them to know how to access their Google drive folder and so over and over again, we go over this. And then, so each email is very specific to make the, make the overwhelm low. That is the only thing that we're trying to do in onboarding. High level of support and communication in a very, the tone is very calm. Yeah. Not like how I normally am. Not Pippin. <laughs> <laughs> because they're, they're going a mile a minute. And so our sure. onboarding process, there's just such specific after they finish with it we call it the welcome process they have their kickoff call we go through an asana template where we screen share they have homework that they're supposed to complete we check the homework make sure that it's good and then they know that they're going to get their login on sunday night all calls happen on friday kickoff calls okay they know that they're going to get their login for the classes the lessons on sunday night mm. and then from there that's when they, we really communicate with them in Slack and then it's just self-guided. Nice. We have literally improved that every single week for the last four months, every single I, week. That's, that is amazing and, and um, so commendable because I think 
onboarding is where a lot of things go wrong for a lot of people in their programs. I had one salon owner that is just a beast. I mean, he is doing stuff that I'm like, you are just killing it. And he told me the way you onboard someone the first few weeks. Um, and for us, it's a much shorter time frame. Yeah. but the way that you onboard someone will be the level of perspective that they have on you and your company. Yeah. And I, I took that and it's the same for every single company out there. And we, we would just listen. And so for all of you that are listening, one thing that really helped me, cause it's like, okay, well, what needs to be improved? How do I know what needs to be improved? Every time you get a question from a client and they should know the answer, something needs to be made better on your part. Yeah, that is a really, really good point. And I think a lot of people experience that where they're like, wait, you should know that. Like yep. we tell you that, you should know that. And to have the perspective of, wait, 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 that means we're doing something wrong yep. rather than, oh, well, the, the client was just not reading carefully or the client wasn't doing their work correctly or the client's just not, doesn't understand this right. But to have the perspective of, no, no, we have to fix the experience on our end. That's phenomenal. It is, it's, it's what, it's how you, it's the experience. It's how you can charge a lot of money because you have went through the entire onboarding, the entire program, the graduation process from the perspective of them, not yeah. you. Right. And that's really developing team members too. Like some sure. of my team, when I would go in and check up with some of my internal team and ask, and they're like, I went over, I went over that with her four times. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You need to be saying this four times in four different ways. And then after that happens, you need to start all over again. And so throughout our onboarding process, we have strategically implemented saying the same thing over and over again, but in very different ways. That way, by the time we know that they start on that Monday, they're pretty clear. Yeah, that's a pretty, that right there is a game changer, I think, for most people. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of get that concept in their head, that just because you say something, just because you, you think you communicate it, doesn't mean it's been communicated, and you have a choice. You can sit around and you can complain that the person didn't hear you, or you can realize that that person and their experience is your job, and yep. fix it. That's, that is a really, that's a really, really, really critical point. Yeah. Yep. I know everyone listening, they're going to, they're going to feel that real hard. <laughs> <laughs> they're definitely going to be like, Oh, that's so true. Yeah. And then to understand, well, why is it important? Like, is it, is it important to start taking action in your company and is it urgent enough? And I feel like that is where profit comes from because that will give you confidence when you're getting so much great feedback and so many good reviews from your current clients. That is what will help you charge without a doubt because you're so confident in what you've built. Yeah. Yep. That is for sure. That confidence. Yeah, it is true. And going back to the original question that we were talking about around um, increasing prices, a lot of people do think, oh, well, it's just an inner game thing and I just change one little thing that I'm thinking and suddenly everything all just gets better. And um, what you've basically said is that it's a, uh, it's fundamentally a cycle. It's a loop where uh, first you take a little bit of a step, then you do what's necessary to improve experience, to increase value so that you can uh, see how that experience is received. And that gives you the confidence to go around and, and do it again. Yep. That's yep. great. That's so Tell us what's, as you're looking to grow uh, PIP University, what are some of the next things that you're looking at now um, that you realize you're going to need to build in in order to onboard 60 people a month or, you know, even more, 100 people a month? I would say, you know, to, build, to, to help us scale better and faster, the systems that we currently have in place are pretty strong for our current client. Yeah. What we are focusing on, going to be focusing on, because right now we're doing a shift in the avatar. So that's taking like all of our mental space. Sure. Um, but once that happens and it's very clear, we, we're going to have to do diligence when it comes to how we onboard our team members. Mm, interesting. 
And so how we, how we onboard our team members and how our team members are trained yeah. to deliver the level of, um, you know, experience that I would deliver. And I just feel like this is something that the salon has helped me with so good because our onboarding is just amazing. Our training Imagine. is amazing. Yeah where we want to create that here also, because I do not want this to be a personal brand that is about me. And right now it's, it's a little bit like that where I can like draw them in, yeah. but I want the client to know it doesn't matter who they're working with. It's going to be amazing. And the only way that I can have confidence in that happening is through our onboarding and training new team members who are going to be doing that. Yeah. And then making sure that they have the appropriate systems to follow that are in place. So I am not going to be coaching 60 people. Right. I am right now. I took my, I have three students and they are, all of them are in their 11th week or in one of them is in their 12th week. So I'm almost done with all the people that I'll ever be their professor. And then I'll, I'll come back and then I will lead the professors and then I am in charge of client success, which I love because then I just get to pop in everyone's Slack channel and see what their progress is. I get yeah. to see their folders in Google drive. And then I'm just like the little cherry on top when I pop <laughs> in the intentional. And I like being that way yeah. because I want to focus on building my professors and making them really, really strong. That's yeah. And it's, you've essentially, realize that to scale, you've stepped the level up. You've moved up essentially the, to the next level of seeing, uh, you know, instead of doing the tasks, sort of managing the tasks, and then at some point managing those who are managing the tasks, you're stepping up the level. That's great. And I think it's something that's really important for everyone to, to just know that I, I feel this too, and I know this too, but I just, I just don't care enough <laughs> that in order a lot of people feel like that's, they just cannot do that because they bring in way too much of the revenue. They yeah. close way too many of the sales. Yeah. They're way too good at working with 20 clients a month. That is a hustle. Like that, that's a hustle. And it might be a really good paying hustle, but to really make an impact, to create an empire, like really create an empire at some point, there's going to be a little bit of sacrifice. I don't necessarily believe that it has to come the sacrifice has to be made with dollars. When I retired from behind the chair, I was bringing in um, a quarter of a million a year behind the chair. And then I had, I had phased out. So like it was so finessed and so strategic that the next year when I was completely retired, we had grown 25% without yeah. me being behind the chair. Yeah. Same thing can happen here, but it's just about those systems and those team members being what they need to be. Cause that's how you're really going to be able to make a bigger impact and, and be able to make, be messing around with a lot more money. Yeah. Well, and I think you've, you've pinpointed the right direction. You I mean, you've, you've spent the time putting the systems in which are customer facing, and now you're putting the systems in which are team facing and you're working on the talent management component, which will in turn obviously benefit your customers because you have such a focus on customer experience and that training will then uh, flow through. Um, and, and then the second point you made, which I think is critical is, you, you know, there, there is not this natural trade off between doing it all yourself and the money that you're making. There's not a natural, uh, there isn't, isn't a law <laughs> that says that when you start to move away from the actual, um, production of the service that you somehow make less money, that that's not the way it goes. The other thing I would add is you can't. I mean, if you thought you could do it by yourself, you certainly can't execute something with a mission as big as yours by yourself. You're going to oh. need an entire set of people to transform an industry. And so if you set your sights as big as you've set them, uh, you have to have other people. You've got to be able to enroll them in that, in that mission. Otherwise, you won't get there. Yes, that's so true. And I'm just a person too where I really enjoy leading. I really enjoy leading and I really enjoy celebrating together, like celebrating the wins, no matter yeah. how big or small. And I enjoy being in the trenches 
when you're in the trenches with other people, it's, it's very weird because you're also like, I need to make sure I hit payroll. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, you, um, it's just not as scary because when you've got people looking at you that are like, I believe, man, I believe. And, and we're, it's, it's hard right now because we're yeah. figuring this out and sure. we're so passionate about this and we're creating a way for other people, no matter what your product is or what industry, you should feel that way about your product. Because if not, it's like, why are you wasting time? Yeah, for sure. Be passionate. But when you've got other people that believe in it so much, because if you're really on a mission and you want to, you want to do some damage, the blows that you're going to have to get up from are going to be so tough. <laughs> it's so much easier to have that with people that believe just as much yeah. as you, because a lot of time your team, I speak with, with Pip and with my salon, your team is what will carry you through when you don't know if you can do it anymore. And I think that some entrepreneurs, like if they're doing it on their own and then they switch and they get out of an industry or they just want to go back to doing something. I'm like, man, I wonder if that would have happened if you would have had a team. Yeah. Because that's a really good so question. Good to be supported and for people to believe there's times where I'm like, I cannot give up on this because they believe in it way too much. And their belief just inspires me so much yeah. that it's important for everyone to think about. Yeah. Some for people sure. dread it. They dread the like, Oh, Lee, Lee, having people scares me. Like that scares me. I just want to go have fun. Like I yeah. want to, I'm like, no, what's scary is always wondering like what's going to come in next month. And then knowing that you have to be a part of it to come in next month. And then right. you're doing it all alone. Right. That it, it is. That's it. It's like being some, so the thrill of being the one person who's responsible for making it happen can also turn into the, the danger uh, of it all, especially as you start to grow because keeping, keeping things running when you're, when, when you've got way more people involved is harder. Um, it's, it's much more work for sure. So you know, I, I, th I think your insights on the value of team, not just from a scaling, but from a supporting perspective are really, that's yeah. really, uh, that's really valuable. So uh, Heather, we are out of time, which is unfortunate because I could talk to you forever, but yeah. I do know you're busy and I want to respect that. Um, for those people who have in listening to this have said, Hey, this is someone they need to connect with, um, either in the industry or, uh, otherwise, what's the best way for them to be able to connect with you? I would say Instagram and my okay. handle is, um, PIP university. So P I P university. Perfect. And it's cool. Cause we have a lot of people following us that are not industry at all. Um, and it's also just fun that after you hear somebody's story and you like hear the stuff that they go through and you hear how they believe, it's cool to watch them on Instagram and the stuff that they're posting and stuff and knowing the back end story. So yeah. that's probably yeah. the best point of contact. Great. Instagram it is. Awesome. Uh, thanks so much, Heather. This, is, this has been really good. Uh, you've dropped a lot of really good insights and I don't care if you're in the beauty industry or not, uh, listening to some of this stuff about how you... Um, you know, create an experience and onboarding and raising your prices. I mean, you've covered the gamut here. So thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. Yeah, uh, absolutely. My pleasure. 100%. So for those of you who've been joining us, thanks so much for being with us on the six to seven figure show. And uh, we will see you next time. Bye.